I originally started teaching a hand-up drawing, oh, 50 years ago. How do you draw something that you don't know anything about? I'm Glenn Vilpu. I approach animal drawing differently. I teach animal drawing from a structural point of view so that you can start to draw animals from imagination. I'm Glenn Vilpu. Uh, today, right now, animal drawing. Now, let me give you a little background on how I approached animal drawing and how I started teaching animal drawing. And I've been doing that for, I've been teaching animal drawing for probably you know, close to 50 years. Okay. The first time I started teaching animal drawing was not to teach animal drawing. <laughs> it was really on how to take and draw something that you didn't know anything about. And so that was the beginning point. And it's all based on analyzing what it is that you're drawing, just like my figure drawing class. In fact, you're gonna, those of you who have been in my figure classes, this will all seem very, very familiar. Okay, so the idea was to take and analyze what you were looking at. Okay, now, how do you go about doing this? Because you don't know anything about the thing that you're drawing. Okay, you start with something that you do know. Or hopefully, what we're focusing on then, we're starting with, we'll take an example now. We're gonna take, what do we, what do we know is us, or the humans, okay? So if we start out with the basic elements, that are common to all people. Okay, let's take and start with uh, the basically the skull. Okay, this you need to know to start with. Now, everybody has two eyes, a nose, a mouth. We have ears that would be sticking in here. We're all pretty much the same. So these are the basic elements that we start with. Okay, so now let me take and go through this and. Uh, <clears throat> so the starting point is first, and I'm going to do a profile here in the beginning. Okay, now here's our basic uh, human. We, we start out with something like that. Uh, the eyes are in the center. We got a brow line here, a cheekbone, uh, the nose sticks out. Uh, the mouth here, chin, the jaw coming back. Uh, everybody's ear is in pretty much the same place. We have a zygomatic arch, which comes back here. Uh, you can feel the corner of the eye socket here, coming back. We have the uh, nuchal ridge in the back of our head, and the neck then taking and coming down. Okay. <clears throat> That's the, and we pull from that into the rib cage. That's the beginning. Okay, now, everybody, everybody has, now let's just take and look, draw this again, a little bit from the front view. Okay, eyes are in the center. We got the corners of the eye socket through. Cheekbone here. The ear uh, pretty much lines up here. The plane going across through here, bottom of the nose, down, corner, jaw, up and down. Okay. Then pit of the neck, neck going down. <coughs> Eyes. Here. Okay, this is pretty much a standard. Now, what if we take and Let's start with this again, and I'll draw a little bit lighter, and we'll start to modify. And we'll draw this sort of three-quarter view now. Okay. 
corners of the eye socket. Brow line. Eyes going down, corners of the cheek. Jaw, head is plain, and the mouth, the nose, and here, mouth coming out. So it's got the uh, zygomatic arch, got the spine coming through, pit of the neck down here. Now, okay, what if I take off? That's taken, just remove uh, the top part of the head. I go back here. And I'm beefing up the bra line a little bit. Coming down, but still got the cheekbones coming through. Now, what are the elements that we take and deal with? Is scale of animals and what who are predators and who are going to get eaten okay so basically we're predators where our, our eyes are straightforward but we eat pretty fairly soft food okay but if you take a chimpanzee or a gorilla they're eating a lot of very rough food and their jaws are much stronger so if we take so we already here as i removed sort of in the sense the brain here so now if I pull out the mouth through here, and you got the teeth in here, the nose is still in the same place. Okay, so the minute I start to do that, it starts to become pretty much a chimpanzee. Okay, so, but now we have to deal with scale. Okay, the bigger the animal is, the heavier it is, the more muscles they have to have uh, to take and deal with this. But the fundamental elements are, all, are pretty much the same. There's not that much difference, really, between, say, a mouse and a horse or a dog, something like that. They're all, we all have the same, all mammals have the same basic elements. Now, so if I take and say, well, okay, what about a gorilla? Well, if you take a profile of a gorilla, uh, so go back to what I've just drawn here. You've got all I've done here now is taken this, uh, pulled out this, see, the nose is still in the same place, and I lopped off the top. So there you basically, you've got, uh, a chimpanzee, uh, has a, but now if we have a gorilla, a gorilla's got this huge head. Let me show you. This is a gorilla. Look at this head. Look at the scale that we're talking about here. It's heavy, but what you see here is we have this big flat area across the back of the head. Now that's needed to take and hold up this massive head that we're working with. So you've got this large volume that we're looking at. So this thing, but you notice that the brow, the mouth, cheekbones, where the ear is, and right here, let me put some of this down. The ear is right there, same place, the end of the zygomatic arch. So as we take the form there, as I take this and add this, and we start to come in. So now we've got basically a gorilla with big muscles taking, coming down, heavy head, but all of the basic elements are in the same place. Nose, mouth, eyes. All we have is difference. That's all there is. You look at to see the difference. And so that becomes an analysis. So once you know the human head, you pretty much know a gorilla head with slight variation. Okay. And 
the slight variations, of course, can be rather dramatic as we're taking and working with these things. But here it's a matter of scale. In other words, if I take here, here, this is a cat, cat skull. Okay. This is a tiger skull. They're the same, they're basically the same thing. There's not that much difference other than size. It's the size that takes and makes the difference. Okay, but the cat, the house cat's a predator. The lion obviously is a predator. Or this is a tiger actually. But you can see the tiger now, like the gorilla, had to have an extra extension of this plate back here to take and hold up this massive head. Okay, but the eyes, the cat's obviously a predator. Now, there are differences. Uh, we come through these things. So this is one of the big, the big differences right away to start with, as we're talking about what do they eat? Let's talk chimpanzee, gorilla, rough food. Uh, cats, they eat their predators, They're just like us. So there are differences, but the eyes, the nose, the mouth, things are all pretty much the same. Now, but when you move away from uh, the predator type, we're talk talking about who the predator is eating, who are they chasing. Then we change uh, the basic anatomy, but the parts are all in the same place. So as we take and go from that, now we take a, a good example here would be, let's take this. It's a mountain goat. Sheep, goats, all pretty much the same. Okay. But when you notice that the eyes are on the side, this way. Okay. So what we get then is we start out with the same basic configuration. And as we're starting out, we usually, and this is the same thing. Now, <clears throat> you're going to find, as I'm doing the drawing for these animals, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff that's going to look very, very familiar in terms of animation drawing. We take and do a lot of what you do, and I did this in the figure. We take and we construct the figure, we construct the animal as we're going through doing the drawing. And, but we construct it in a logical way. And as we go through this, you're going to see we're not all that different. Now, these guys are the, from here to a goat or to a, a rabbit, pretty much have a lot of similarities. Okay. But here we can see now that we have, as I'm taking here, instead of the eyes being in front like this, we have now the eyes are more onto the side. So we got through this shape, the eyes, the eyes are on the side here now. And we go back, roll in through here. Now you're going to find it, but also what they eat. A sheep take and eat their browsers. They're picking stuff off the ground. So notice that there's no, there's no teeth up here. He's taking and he takes and he's a nipper. The bottom teeth that come up, they're nipping off the bottom here. So this is the basic part of it now. So we get the differences of what they eat, scale, but eyes are in the same place, nose is in the same place, zygomatic arch is in the same place, the ear is in the same place. So all of the basic stuff, same spot. And this is what you need to take and now. And then we start to look at the differences. So as I'm drawing this, I'm, I come through and I say, well, all right, come out here, here. And the nose, the nose would be in the same spot. No different than the horse, same thing. Come through mouth, jaw's gonna come down underneath. The zygomatic arch is taking and pulling around through into here, the ear will be right here. Okay, so 
we constantly are taking and looking at these basic elements. This is the starting point. Now, we start talking about teeth, how they take and relate to each other. So we can take and look at, uh, well, well, I've got it here. Okay, this is another, this is a uh, sheet. Look at the teeth again, uh, very similar to this. Big difference between the two here is this has got more of a rounded face coming across through here. Okay, eyes away to the side, zygomatic arch teeth. Now you notice the teeth. The teeth they don't they're they're grinders. They grind the grain, they're eating stuff off the ground. Okay. Now, that's where our friend the cat takes in, comes in to play. As you look at this, now, look at the teeth that we're looking at now. Okay. Now, one thing a lot of people don't realize, cats can't chew. These teeth, this stuff goes just like that. There's no side movement to it. It's a stab and slice, what it is. So what they eat then is important. You, but your house cat is exactly the same. House cat, they don't chew, they squash, they catcher, they puncture, okay? Uh, still looking forward, you can see the eyes are facing forward, zygomatic arch. Got this huge space in here because the muscles now that come through are hooking into the jaw. They have to be really big muscles because this guy is taking and opening his mouth like that to take and grab something. Okay, so this is your basic, uh, this is a Siberian tiger. Okay, now, but we go back to our gorilla. Okay, gorillas can chew, but they can also stab, they can also nip. So we've got all of the basic elements. We're talking about scale, we're talking about stuff. Now, if we take and go from the cat to say a rodent, now you're looking, look at those teeth. Okay. What do you got? The teeth are now taking in for gnawing. Okay. The eyes sort of combination. Looking forward, pretty much looking to the side though. Okay, so when we look at some mice and we're gonna later on we're gonna be taking and drawing mice and a hamster. Okay, you can see that this way this goes, but they can open up, they're really gnaws. But the eyes are still in the same place, nose is still in the same place, teeth are in the same place. Jaw goes back to the same point right in front of the ear. So we're all in the same, same thing. And this carries through. So now we can take and so you look from here to this. Now we have a cat. There's a little white job here, the cat. And I think, I'm not sure what this was, but this is another rodent, a little bit larger. Uh, sharp teeth, nipper, just like the cat. Uh, so the similarities, pretty much the same. You start looking at the skulls, maybe one's a little bit longer, one's a little bit forward. Not that much difference. Now, some of the animals do have rather different looking skulls. Okay, now here, this is a, a uh, domestic pig. When I got this pig, it was on a platter with all uh, somebody had just uh, butchered it and brought the thing to me. The head was on a platter, and I had to take and clean it. And but you look at the shape now, the skull. It's very different. Okay, but what you see, the eyes are in the same place, nose is the same place, teeth, uh, zygomatic arch. Now the eyes are a little bit more. They're still, they're on the side, but they tend to look forward a little bit. Pigs can be predators, okay? So now, but you can find uh, that they're 
the teeth. Now, this might be of interest. I, when I got this uh, and I was cleaning it, unfortunately it got dropped someplace along the line and got broken, but you can look at the thickness. Look at the thickness of the skull in here. Really thick. Again, so we have all these basic things that are similar that we deal with. And similarity goes to a lot of different points. For instance, okay, we started out with the idea of a sphere. But when you start dealing with the other animals, like the deer, even the uh, pig, uh, goats, what we see that there's pretty much variations on a triangle. It's, they become this type of a basic shape with the eyes in here, the nose coming through, mouth, the jaw coming down. And what we find then is that the, this triangle, now this could be, we're talking about uh, giraffe, horse, uh, uh, goats, sheep. They're all variations on this triangle. And so there's slightly differences. Some are taken a little bit broader, but we start to look at the similarities of shapes then and to see how these variations play one into another. So these are the steps now. As we go through the figure then, as we go through the animals, we're constantly taking and breaking it down into its components. And so here we need to take in, let's get a clean piece of paper here and we'll take in. Okay, now, as we go back to uh, what we know is our own, ourselves. Let's take and start the idea of the rib cage. Well, now here's where we get some uh, really big differences between the rib cage. You know that we're very broad. We have this clavicle that take and come around. So we have this broad shape that's coming through here. So let's take and uh, compare a little bit here. Now, as I'm taking and thinking, okay, if I look at a cross section of our rib cage, what we see is something like this. We're very, we're broad and our scapulas are on the side and they're going back this, we're on the back, sort of this back and side type thing. Okay, so the scapulas are back here, this way. Okay, now, as we start going through all the mammals, what we're gonna see is a very clear distinction here. Like if we take a horse or a cat, what you're going to see, instead of this, the rib cage is taking and doing this. It's rather narrow, rather than wide. Okay, what that does is the scapulas that we have on the back here, now taking come forward into here. Okay, so what we think of as the shoulders now actually become in front. Okay, so now I'm gonna take and we're gonna go through the sort of a generic, generic uh, four-legged uh, mammal idea. So we start with, <clears throat> and this is the, it follows the basic pattern of the human. In other words, if I take and do a simple diagram of a human, Our primates, okay, we have the head, neck, rib cage, going down, pelvis, through here, the legs coming out, and we go down to the knees and so forth. But this, we have these very clear cut sections. Clavicles come from here, go out this way, that way. Arms come down, elbow, wrist. Okay. Notice I'm taking in putting spots to where joints are 
this is going to become a very, very critical part of what we do. Okay, so now like taking sort of the generic animal here is that start with, say, okay, the head. Yeah, I'll give it even a, a sort of triangular shape here. Feel the neck coming in, the rib cage. Okay, now this is a part that most people tend to uh, not be conscious of, even in the regular figure drawing classes. That the rib cage is very, very small up at the top. There's a tiny, 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 tiny shape up here. Well, that's true for all of the animals now. Our rib cage is very small at the top. Well, so dog, cats, horses, they all are the same. The spine now takes and comes through. It goes through to here. So we have our rib cage. We have our simple part. We've got the same elements here. Except now the scapulas are taking are on the side. Coming through this way. And then the elbow comes down, comes down through the wrist and into all of the phalanges. Okay, now a pelvis. Now here's here's where we get some differences, but not for all of the animals. Now a lot of the larger animals are have similar kind of pelvises that we do. Notice that this is very broad across here. Well, when you start looking at some of the animals, now what we find. Uh, let me find my pieces of pelvis here. <laughs> okay, the pelvises of the uh, of most of your animals, cats, dogs, horses, not horses so much, but uh, your, your felines and stuff. It's a very narrow. This is a uh, a half of a pelvis here. Okay, so this is a corner. Let me take and draw what I'm trying to say. This is a this would be for a goat. Uh, or well, actually, I take this back. This is probably a dog. Uh, the piece came through, but you can see that it's rather long this way. I'm going to take and uh, just diagram this pelvis. Is where our pelvis is. I'll do this. Our pelvis is broad this way. Profile. Pubic arch here. Isquiotuberosity is here. Here's where the trochanter would be. The tail coming down into here. End of the iliac crest, then the leg going down through here. Okay, that's us. Now, if you take a cat, uh, or even a rabbit here, we have a rabbit. As you look at this, what you see is the pelvis is long and narrow this way. So the difference then here, as you can see, this is like a line that goes down this way. So let's see if I can put this back. Okay. So what I was showing you here is this rail. It's just one half, one half of pelvis, but it's long. So if I take and modify ours here, what we get is it's like this to that. Okay, now if we take and diagram this three-dimensionally, then what we see, and I take and we're looking for, these are like two different rails that are taking and going back this way with the spine, the tail coming out of up here, the trochanter here, the isquiotuberosity would be in here, and then going down the knee, ankle, heel, and start moving down. Now, cats and dogs, pretty much the same, same as this rabbit, pretty much. Okay, the difference between, say, a cat and a dog is that a cat's pelvis is parallel this way. These are points are equal. Tail coming out of here. A dog is just the opposite. A dog's pelvis is wider at the back than it is at the front. 
Okay, so what we're talking about now is we're talking about the spine that's coming through and going in here, pelvis that is on an angle coming across through here, through the spine. And then we're taking, coming down, this. Notice that the shape here, this area here, this is roughly a square. That you will find is true for most four-legged animals. Dachshunds, of course, have been bred to be something else, and so some of the other animals. But that's that's very typical. Okay, so we tend to start looking for the same elements within the drawing. Then, okay, uh, let's take and uh, get another clean sheet of paper here. Okay, now I'm going to draw this uh, generic animal here. A couple of these are like three quarter. So now we start out with his head coming through. Look at the eyes going across. Through the muzzle shape. Going through. Think of the cheekbones going back. Through. Nose is going to be in the same place. Ears in the same spot. Okay. Now, think of the neck going back in. And what we're doing now is we're taking and saying, okay, the neck is fitting into this rib cage, which is this volume that takes and is going back in. The rib cage where the spine continues on going back, and now we come to the pelvis. Here, pelvis now is these rails that are going back. Through here with the tail, would be coming out here. Now, in the front, we take the scapula now, we're taking and coming forward this way. Now, there's a difference in the scapulas because of the fact that it's in front and they don't have a clavicle to hold them apart. Okay, so the shape, the shape of the scapula is different. Here, ours is this sort of a triangular shape with one side of it being so much larger than the other side. But what we find here now is the scapulas for well, most of the animals now, you will find that the two sides will be pretty much the same. Also, they don't have a point for uh, where the clavicle would be attaching. Okay, so but what this does now, this creates a corner in the front. Now, the neck now, if we take into consideration all of the uh, esophagus uh, and the muscles and stuff. This is essentially a cylinder now that is fitting into this triangle of a box. And what we, you will see as we go through and drawing the animals, this becomes a very clearly a box. And generally, we were able to see the scapulas sticking up from the back. The Humerus, as it goes down, where their upper arm is, helps to make us see this sort of a box type shape. So now we have a rib cage that's taking and coming down. They have a, a sternum, just like we do to the neck. Okay, coming through. This is a rounded form. We're coming around through here. Okay. Now, the waist, this is a different point now. Well, you look at our waist, you can see that these bones are taking pretty much, the spines on the thing are pretty much parallel. Okay, this is from a, a uh, it's from a sheet. Notice how this thing sticks out. Okay, each part, each part of the Spine has specialized uh, bones. The neck is different from the thorax to the lumbar to the sacrum.
they're all different. Okay, now at the waist, these bones stick out, people are just showing more like this on the side. So that we get a very flat area across here, which really creates a waist within the form. And then we feel the corners of the pelvis are actually sticking out at that point. So now, if I diagram what we've done so far, head, and I'll actually put a spout on this thing, ears will be the side, we have a neck, we have a rib cage, it's narrow in front, broader as we go back, we have a waist, and then we have the pelvis which is again a box form. So you know you've got you've got these schematic, you can see these are the elements. The scapula then will be taking fitting in here and here on the side going forward this way. Okay. Now this becomes the basic elements that we're constantly looking for when we're doing the drawing. Now the other part of this is the pattern, the pattern that the bones go. As an artist, you have to know, and if you're going to start painting or illustrating or animating, you have to know where all the parts are. Just like here, you've got to know how oh, this relates to that, to that, to that. You would never think about drawing the human without knowing where the elbow was or the shoulder or the wrist. We have to take and deal with this. Now, one of the basic characteristics is that in four-legged animals, it's a pattern. Again, it's really a pattern. We have a diagonal here. Now, this is true to almost all of the animals with some exceptions. Okay, the first big exception is an elephant. Elephants Clavicles are not on a diagonal, they're vertical. Okay, but here, what we find is we go from here to here to here to here. Yeah. It's a zigzag pattern. It's this. Each of these points you think about as being a hinge that can take and move, just like us. We have this, this is like a hinges that they can take and move. So we focus on following the pattern of how these forms take and go. It's pattern, pattern, pattern. And so you need to know how this pattern takes and works. Okay. So this is the beginning. This is the beginning thing that we're doing. Now, whether it's this rabbit, the rabbit's got the same exact thing. Scapula's going to the side, coming down to the elbow, to the wrist, and the fingers. Leg, coming down, has a patilla, just like we do, come down to the heel, ankle, and then down into the toes. The rib cage, narrow in front, gets broader as it goes back. Notice that the spine now has the things that are going out to the side, just like what we're talking about here. The rail of this of the pelvis is the same. And this one, they've got the tail sort of folded back on it here. But this is all part of the same basic configuration. It's the same thing. See, so we take and you looking for all the see, see, when you look at this up here like that, very familiar, very familiar. So these are the shapes, these are the shapes that we take and deal with and look at. And we're constantly trying to see the difference from one to the other. Okay, now, some of the differences that we come into, and I'll take them uh, as we start working, I'll be showing you more skeletons and stuff online that we take and we build with this stuff. So you're constantly taking and looking at the sort of a basic pattern. So no matter where you're taking and looking from, 
whether you're looking at it from the back. Now, here again is a strong similarity between drawing the figure and drawing the animal. The first thing you deal with is the gesture, the movement of the animal. Now, one thing I want to point out, if you go out and do, you got your own cat, your own dog, or look at horses, they go to the zoo, you're drawing the animal, they're not going to sit still for you unless they're sleeping. And then they're no fun to draw, okay? So what they're going to do, they will be constantly moving. And so what you do is you do many drawings and you will find that the animals will tend to cycle through the same basic poses as we start going through. So the first step then is just taking and feeling, feeling the flow of what the animal is doing. And as I'm drawing, I'm thinking of the pattern that the animal takes. Where the scapulas are, which way it's turning, if it's looking up and through, I'm constantly taking and just drawing the flow of the stuff. It's like when I first started working in animation, I knew nothing about animation. I was 40 years old, but I had been teaching animal drawing for quite a while already. And so when I had to start taking and drawing characters, animals, we draw animals as often as people in animation, that it was just very natural. There was no big difference from what I was doing. So we just took and we started to build with this. So now as I come through, I'm taking into consideration these different parts. We got the head. Now I've got this animal taking and turning. So I'm thinking of where the eyes, which way are they going? Muzzle is going up that way. The neck is pivoting. I think of the rib cage. So now as I'm drawing this rib cage, I'm going around, coming through. Scapula, I go, okay, where is the scapula? Well, the scapula is taking and coming up. It's gonna be in here, coming back from the scapula to the elbow, to the wrist. I look for the waist coming through, and then I'm conscious of the box that's being created by the pelvis itself. So I've got all of these elements now that I'm taking and constantly taking and working with the tail, where the tail would be coming out of here, where the leg is going back in and coming back out, and how we start to take and work with this. So this is the beginning stages of everything that we do. It's first you take and get the gesture, feel the flow, taking in. And as I'm doing that, I consciously right away, you can see in the zigzag as I'm coming through. Nothing fussy, nothing, you just you're feeling the flow as you're coming through. And you build on that. Empower your creativity with the Internet's leading subscription library for artists at nma.art. No matter what your skill level, you can learn drawing, painting, sculpture, and much more with thousands of videos taught by master instructors. Our instructors are professional artists and best-selling authors, leading art education with over 40 books in print around the world. Our cutting-edge interactive learning format takes art instruction to a new level. Learn at your own pace, anytime, anywhere. Take advantage of our self-study assignments and beautiful references to practice your artistic skills. Our mission is to provide exceptional training to artists around the world at an affordable price. Thousands of artists just like you have used our library to take the first step into the art world, open new career possibilities and improve their professional skills. NMA.art is the most comprehensive art training on the internet. Your subscription is everything you need to reach your artistic goals. Let us transform your art and unleash your creative potential. Start your free trial today at nma.art. Okay, 
So, <clears throat> what we have here is a running cat, a cheetah, I guess it is. Now, so I'm going to go through this several times, and then we're going to look at the, the uh, one that's been the stuffed one and start to relate the thing. So the first, the first thing that we go through, and this is the basic procedure that we follow when we're doing the drawing. And you take and you through. I'm taking in basically hitting the points that we have in common that we all see. So you feel come through those. And when you look at the mice, you're going to see, I'm going to be drawing some mice, and you're going to see I do precisely the same thing. Go through. Notice I'm drawing very lightly, and that's giving me a chance to take and adjust. So there's no difference between what I'm doing with this to what I would be doing drawing a human. Now, <clears throat> scapula, again, it's coming up, comes forward. So if you're thinking of the big paddle, think of going across, okay, and and I'm dealing with the pattern of how the limbs go. And it's feeling the pattern as we take and go through. And we can see the hind quarters coming up. Down. Draw through. In other words, I'm drawing right through, coming in. And I do this even when like I like I'm looking at the, the the real animal, I draw through it as if it was made out of glass. So now let's take and break it down into the elements a little bit more. So now first we're seeing corners of the eye socket. Same thing as humans now. And as I'm drawing the shape, now one thing that we don't do on humans so much, but what I do when I'm drawing animals, is I go to the back of the skull and try to hit the point. Uh, on a horse, we call this the pole. Okay. Now you feel the some of the differences, like the eye sockets, don't necessarily necessarily always attach. There, there, you see the nose, and looking, coming out, seeing the shape. Come through. Now, note the cheekbones are really wide. We saw this when we were looking at the tiger, because they needed to have a place for all of those big muscles to take and come down and through to attaching to the jaw. Okay, so all of this is coming around, it's all the same. Looking through, and now feel the neck coming down and fitting in, going through. <clears throat> now I'm blocking this in. I'm then I'm going to come back and modify this into a, a, a little simpler breakdown that we deal with for uh, when we're actually drawing. So here we're seeing all the pieces coming through. Notice how the rib cage is pretty small in front. Coming around. Now, the whole big paddle of the scapula, it's really big round shape. And notice that the spine is in the center in contrast to ours. Okay, coming through. And pick it up on the other side. Now, particularly with cats, when they're moving around, you can see that very, very, very clearly. You can see the whole point. Now, now as we go along later on here, I'm going to take and uh, just moving this up so I can see the foot a little bit better. <clears throat> as we come through, it's coming down. Oh. 
one of the things that we're talking about, the actual movement of how the animals move, how the pattern of the legs move, I would suggest that you get a uh, book, uh, a whole series of books, but basically uh, by Maybridge. Maybridge uh, is the standard that is used by uh, everybody for taking and looking at animal movements. And so that, that, that's the, uh, really the thing that we work with. So we're coming through. Okay, <clears throat> now see, I'm thinking, consciously thinking of this pattern. Remember that this is a Z pattern. And it's always this angle. Even when we do the uh, stretches it out, it's still going to be like you're going to have that Z in there. So you think of these, each of these points now is like a hinge that you're working from. Okay, now you can see the pelvis, corner of the pelvis is up here, going back here. Okay, the other side, we're not seeing it in this view. Then we've got going across from here, kind of forward, down, and then we're going down through here, and then paws coming out with claws, and then the tail, they're taking and moving out from that. <coughs> okay, so that's, 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 that's our basic element to start with. Now, what do we want to take that that I've drawn here now? So, then we start to visualize this as a cylinder that is taking and going down. And it's fitting into this box that's being created by the scapula uh, fitting over. Right. Then the arms going back. Now, here's where, okay, when you think of the muscles here, We've got this shape coming down. Okay, one of the points that is the that allows the animals to have a better leverage system than we do. For instance, if we take and you know, come our back, in other words, if I was drawing uh, my elbow, you would see that the uh, end of the elbow is right here, coming down. Then we go down to the wrist down here. Okay. Well, if you look at the cat here, what you can see that the end of the elbow is actually extended this far. Okay, the muscles then are attaching here. Well, that's a big advantage because here's where the pivot point is right here. So they have a big advantage. And so the muscle is taking and going from here up and then attaching to the scapula. Okay. The muscle coming off of the scapula are taking and attaching farther down. So again, that gives them a double advantage. So what we see then is these muscles now are pulled down into here. We feel the shape in here. We get this pulling out. And so there's where we start to see the actual shape of the animal. They have the trapezius muscles just like we do. They come off, we can feel the shapes in here. Now, one of the things that we, I haven't mentioned it, and we were looking at the things, and if we look at some of the other skeletons, it'll become more obvious, is that the spinal column is far as barely stick. We have the seven cervical vertebrae at the back of our neck sticks out, but most stuff doesn't stick out very much. But we look at the animals, their vertebrae will stick out in varying degree, depending on how big the head is, how, how what, where things have to connect. So what we see then is a building up in here, like this, that the tendons then are taking and pulling through. So and again, this is something, I'm gonna, I'll talk about this more later. But then you got the waist goes in, the pelvis now will sticks out coming through. The muscles are pulling off of the scapula, off the pelvis, down to the leg. We feel a pull and stretching down, coming through 
the muscles are coming through, rebuilding. So in other words, the minute you start to take and fill in where the muscles actually go, we can start to see more clearly what we're dealing with. So let's take a look at the animal here now. It's not exactly the same pose, but very close to it. And there's a big difference. He's got his head down, he's got things. So there's some variation in this. But now let's go through this. I'll take and approach this as if I was taking it and doing it, and we'll break it down even more. What we see now is go through the head, going across. Now, even as you're drawing from photographs, take and do the construction. Do not just copy the photograph. Take and bring knowledge to it that you're taking and working with. So come through. You're taking and feeling the flow, feeling the flow as we go through. I would prefer a certain level of inaccuracy, but with movement and a sense of the action over to a, what would you consider a perfect drawing. Now, as we go through these lessons, I'm gonna, I will be also bringing out uh, how the various different legs, how the, how the, uh, fingers, uh, claws that take and work with each other. So now you can see I'm taking it across the other through. Now, I'm here. I'm taking and adding to it. Now, what I do is to think Think of the structure. So coming through, over, you can feel the skull, you feel the cheekbone coming out. We follow that back, the ear is coming through. We can feel the base of the skull in the back, a little bit larger. Here, the ear on the other side, through. Oh. Now, this is a, a uh, question I always bring up in class. <laughs> I, have, I have yet to have anybody that actually knew the answer, but it's so obvious uh, that it, it's funny. The, the question I always ask is, what's the difference between a dog's nose and a cat's nose. I have never had anybody who actually knew it, who have cats and dogs and have all kinds of animals, but they don't. We don't look at the things very much. And here I think I'm coming down and drawing your chin. The big difference between a dog's nose and a cat's nose, okay, here, let's say we have a dog. I'm drawing the cat already, okay. but the dog, the dog doesn't have any hair on its end of its nose. Cats have fur on the top of their nose. That's a very big difference. But if you don't look, you're not really conscious of it. So these are, we're really taking and talking about being very, very conscious of the shape of things that we're looking at. Now, I'm drawing this, I'm going back and now I'm taking and coming through and thinking of the cylinder of the neck as it's fitting into things. Now, as you see this, you can see the corner of the shoulder sticking out. And the other side, a little difficult, you're a little dark, but the same thing coming across. And then what we see in the center 
here. This is the sternum coming down. And they have the pectoralis muscle pulling across. Okay. The scapula now is taking and pulling back and is shaped in here. And it's picking up on the other side also. So these are the basic elements now that we're looking for. And so this, as you look at this, you can see that there's actually a platform. There's a change in the direction of the top as it comes down. As I was drawing these muscles here, you can see that the muscles now are coming down. You feel the elbow coming out. And now we're pulling down into here, coming through, thinking of where the joint is in contrast to where the elbow is. Coming down and into the paw. Now they have the same thing we have in our hands. We have we have the carpal bones, uh, two rows of bones. Well, they have exactly the same thing. And, and like I said, as we go through this farther, we'll be taking and and, and bringing out these similarities even more. So we take and we build now here. And we're talking about the trapezius taking and pulling down. You can feel the muscles taking and going down. The spine is going through. As you can see, this platform, this shape of the way those trapezius muscles take and come off of the scapula. And then the roundness, the roundness of the rib cage. In the corners, we feel this volume as we start coming through. And as this lifts up, now at this point, we are pulling back. We can feel the waist in here pushing down. And then the corner, the corner of the pelvis is it sticking out at that point. Okay. Now, that pelvis is going back. The ischiotuberosity would be back here. The Muscles now are coming off of the scalp. The bone is coming out of here. We come forward. We can see at this point where we're at. The bone is there. They have a patilla just like us. Okay. They come through and then the muscles are taking and it's stretching out. These are your thigh muscles. The pull, your vastus, the rectus femoris. And we can feel in here the wrinkle, the compression is taking place. So all I'm doing is now, as I'm going through this, is I'm taking and hitting, hitting these points. We can feel the bone coming through. We can feel the tendon now coming back. This would be the Achilles tendon as this is stretching back and pulling through. So. We're getting all of the same configuration, anatomical configuration that we do. Yeah. Now, come down. And later on, we'll talk about the differences between the paws, the fingers. Similarities, but there are some uh, actually pretty strategic differences uh, that give them uh, a whole new capabilities. Okay. okay, so now I'm just going to take and uh, break this down a little bit more so we can see a little more clearly. Uh, let's take and I want to take and make a real emphasis now here to seeing that this is the neck. This is a cylinder. Well, we want to see this as a clear clear cylinder that is fitting in. See this here now we get the, so this is a box form on the side now. Okay, so you can see, you can see the differences now. So you want to keep in mind that you've got this real corner here, got this, this is coming down and fitting in. And that we feel the scapula of the spine then coming up through and we feel the scapula on the other side and we've got the trapezius these shapes are going down and there's a corner here and so that we take and feel these forms then as we go back in 
Uh, this paper doesn't work too well with water. Okay. So that that starts getting the point. So you can start to visualize, visualize again going back over this. Planes of the eye socket. The nose is coming down. It's the side. You can feel the cheekbone coming down, and peeling through. You see how I'm just blocking this in as a series of box forms that we would be exactly the same considerations that we're dealing with as a human. Uh, here in the waist, you want to be conscious of the fact that this is coming down. There is a waist that is coming down through here. But not all horses or not all animals have uh, very much of a waist. Like, for instance, the horses, they really don't have a waist. The horses can't bend at the waist. Okay. So you can see the base, how we're building this thing up. So let's look at some of the other elements here. Okay, now here we have, this is a running dog, or more likely a wolf. Okay, and so as we look at this now, same configuration. Start out taking, and uh, let's see. <coughs> We start out with the head. Real. Again, I'm just blocking in very, very simple. Feel the neck coming through. Pull into the rib cage. I'm feeling the spine going back. And so as I draw this, I would be going right around feeling over the round the surface, Just thinking now, one of the things that you notice now, if you look at that photograph, is that we have the vertebrae are sticking up in here. So this is, we didn't, we don't see that on the cat. So this is really a, a much more of a prominent play of this. And as we come through, you can see the spine is it fronting in. The rib cage again, really narrow up here. It's really tiny. Through here. Then it expands dramatically as we go back down in. Come through, building around, spines going back. And then again, pretty long waisted here. And then we get the pelvis back here, going back in. So we're thinking corners. So we come across, you're visualizing where the corner's at here. There, feel this scapula coming across. It's in front, it's this big paddle. Uh, things like the horses, for instance, they have the very similar look. Uh, except they actually have an extension, uh, cartilage across the end of there that takes and makes it uh, even longer. Then we're coming down, pull, through. feel, feel the way, get the shape, where it's moving. Come across, pull through, here, through. Pelvis coming out of here or the leg, I should say. Now the trochanter sticking out, and we're going back, following the pattern, you feel the heel. So it's very different we're talking about a cat and a dog, essentially. Not much different, pretty much the same. So we need to take and be a very, very conscious of how these parts take and work with each other. And we start to see, Guess I could have given myself a little bit more room here, but that that's the idea. So you take, and then if I was to start filling this out, and I can see where I drew this a little bit, you would start coming through. You start to build on top of that. You start to see where the corners are. You start to fill in the muscles that they take and they build. You think of the waist. Now there is there's a difference here now. When you start talking about uh, cats and dogs, and I was just 
uh, reminding this is the thinking of the waste. When you look at a cat, the profile, the profile of a cat. tends to be the, the belly, the rib cage is here, but their stomach tends to be really long. Like in here, it's got a waist, pelvis is here. And we start to see this coming down. Okay, now, most dogs, unless they're way overfed, uh, this doesn't fill in. This doesn't fill in here. So what you see then right here is with the dog, we get the line lifting up this way. Now that's your more typical, that's your more typical contour that we take and deal with. So you're seeing this coming through where the cat will tend to be a little bit more horizontal. Also, some other differences, as we were talking a bit about the skeletons are going in, cats have a much more uh, flexible, flexible skeleton. The cartilage in between is way more flexible. Uh, dogs are, are much more rigid. Uh, it's very easy to throw a cat over your shoulder or around your neck. It's, dogs don't work quite that well. So the, the big shape differences here as more where the dog will tend to be pulled up. And we start to see here, it'll be stretching back. Uh, again, good, good mechanical advantage when it comes to the back, with the legs, uh, the shoulders, the head. Like this guy was a wolf. And so we're pulling through the ears. Same place, nose in the same spot. And the jaw. What you can see is I start to fill in the elements where the muscles take and go. It takes on uh, the look that we're used to seeing. Okay. <clears throat> That's that's the beginning. Okay, let's take and uh, go from there. I originally started teaching Hanum Drawing Hope oh, 50 years ago. How do you draw something that you don't know anything about? I'm Glenn Vilpu. I approach animal drawing differently. I teach animal drawing from a structural point of view so that you can start to draw animals from imagination. This one takes and gives us a whole new sense of what we're talking about, but all the same basic stuff now. So, starting out, oh, let's take in. Uh, okay. All the same stuff now. Got the head. Two. Feel the neck coming in. Feel the, feel the clothes, the spine. At the same time now, I'm taking in, uh, taking of the rib cage. And two. Now, one of the points that uh, I'm bringing this up right now is to show the contrast. Now, this is a buffalo. Look at the great sail that he has up there. We're taking in all the vertebrae, taking in coming through. That is because we now we're taking and attaching all the muscles, or attaching onto the holding on to that head. So as I'm doing this now, look at how far the scapula take and build up. And so we're coming across, these are huge now. And then the sternum is sticking out in front. 
just a little bit behind on the other side. And we come down to the knees. Again, you follow, you follow the bone. You follow the bone. Go through and back in. Now, here he doesn't do this so much. He's taking it coming back. It's pretty much an arc going through. And we get the pelvis back here. And we look to the corner. Coming through. And we pull the bone coming forward. And back. Feel the heel. And down. The other side, a little dark, you can't quite see it, but there's things. So now this is the starting point. Now, as you look look at the head, what do we see? Okay. The eyes, again, straight in the front part. This is this is like uh, like a cow. Uh, similarity to even a horse. You can see the eye sockets, you can feel the nose coming across, and then we're pulling down into the mouth down here. The jaw, cheekbone coming around, and back to the horns, taking coming out. Now, pretty much everybody's horns come out of the same spot. Uh, again, just above the ear, uh, and slightly behind. Uh, the jaw is going to take and fit in, coming forward. Okay. And feel the bison with the horns going out. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to spend too much time on this because I wanted to take and primarily focus on the fact that the contrast, we're talking about all of the same stuff again. We can get the neck, feel the vertebrae coming through. You can see the beginning now. You can see where we start here. Look at the shortness here. This is a big difference now. If you take, if we had a horse here, for instance, we would take a profile, have a profile of a horse. You can see this line coming across here, the neck. There. Now, here we get a line that's pretty much coming across. Doesn't change that much. So that is, we're looking at this, we're picking up through here. So you feel, you feel the pull. Okay. This is coming across. Now, a horse has got the withers coming through here, but the, the but this what creates this line. It is called the nuchal ligament. Okay, now it's where the ligament attaches to these vertebrae that are sticking up that gives us much of the look. So what we have here is the vertebrae will be attaching in here. The nuchal ridge will be attaching here, but then we've got all of this that is lifting up. So. What we see then, when you look at a buffalo, we see this huge, huge lump and the muscles that take and go back down to the pelvis. That's your look. And we can see the scapula it will be pushing through and here it gives us a corner. We can feel this. Now, of course, they're building up with all kinds of fur uh, and make great coats. <coughs> Okay, but you can see the building, the shape of the animal now is being determined by scale, how these things are pulling up. And as we get through here, look at that heel, the way that heel is taking and coming out this way, or actually that's the elbow coming through. So as these muscles come out, the joint is here. So. What we feel then, as we look at them, we feel this big, the muscles coming through, coming down, over. This, all this stuff is built up. We feel the trapezius muscles taking, and even on the back of the neck, building into all of this. So it's focusing, seeing the anatomy, 
seeing the joints that come through. Looking at the two row of bones. Now, one of the differences here is that we're talking about a bi, uh, well, there was two toed animal, clove foot. Okay, now, horses, we were familiar with horses as being with one tone, but they actually started out with three. So, and again, when we talk about horses, we'll take and be doing a day just on horses. Uh, but we start to see how all of this stuff now builds, how we take and work with these volumes. Everything I do, you can see, is I'm adding to that basic structure. Everything begins with the structure itself. And that's where we go. So to be successful as an animal drawing, you have to take and understand the basic structure of the animal that we're drawing. And that, that becomes an absolute. You've got to know how these things take and move, where they go, thinking of the volume. But what I'm trying to do is to give you a simple, simple thing. We see. We see the basic volume fitting into a box coming through. This is a corner, the round, fitting into a box. We have the rib cage underneath. We have the waist, and we have the box, basically for the pelvis that these things are fitting into. And if you can contain, if you can think in terms of these volumes and resist trying to copy the animal. Okay, let's take and take our thinking a little bit farther then. Now we're gonna go through go through the steps again. One thing as you go through and look at these videos and listen to me drawing, you will find that I repeat and I'm constantly doing the same thing. And that's where I started out. I said, you started out by, I started out by teaching animal drawing, by taking and having a way to analyze something that you didn't know anything about. So by actually by the end of today, you should have the tools to take and be able to start analyzing a little bit because you're always looking for the same thing. Okay, so now I start out then. First, get the action, feel the gesture. Even though I'm working with the photograph, I still approach it as if I wasn't. Now, if you will find that if you take and have this pattern uh, uh, develop, that it will give you uh, a, much of the uh, what's needed to take and draw from imagination. And you use, then you use the particular animals, just like a photograph, we use the particular animal as a reference Now, I've just taken a very, very loose beginning. So now I come back in and I start to be a little bit more careful. Now this uh, goat looks like he's been butted. Butted means that the uh, they've taken off the horns. It's a, an animal that's used in a, a petting animal petting thing for children so that they take and to go to the zoo, petting areas, a lot of the 
Adults will have their horns removed. Now, I don't block it all in too tightly to start with. I'm just beginning. Through, come down. I always leave room for myself to take an adjust and change. See? Now, consciously think of this as a cylinder that's fitting in. You feel that cylinder, and we think of the vertebrae now that are sticking up. Okay, now he's got the leg that's coming back, the scapula. The scapula is pulled in from here. Shoulder is over here. The other shoulder is moving forward. The arm is moving his leg out. So taking it in the corner through. Hoof. <clears throat> so notice again, I'm not being very tight yet. I'm taking and going through the steps in the drawing. Feel the shoulder, feel the muscle coming across the elbow, feel the scapula. The, I, I try to make do with them doing the knee. Now, one thing to keep in mind too, the goats, they spend a lot of time taking and uh, kneeling on, on their knees. So a lot of goats have pretty knobby, knobby knees. Now, here's, here's where you Take and make uh, subtle, subtle uh, indications. As I'm drawing this, you can see I'm coming across right at this point now. You can see the where the waist is, and we can feel the corner of the pelvis right there. So if you're looking at, you're seeing this coming down. That's the corner sticking out. Uh, we come back down. So now this leg is going back into here. The heel, the heel is whoop, way up here. Okay, so the elbow is coming forward and is up in here. Okay, this these forms are coming down. I take it back. I was right to start with, but I'm looking at. <laughs> looking at the change in the color of the thing that can throw you off dramatically right away. Okay. Now, coming down, a pull. Yeah. Okay, now where I go from here is I take it and I'm always focusing on the three dimension. So as I come through now, I'm taking and really visualizing, I think the center coming down. You can see that the ear, this is sticking up. The eye socket behind, as we looked at the skulls, was taking and coming through from here. So this surface is taking and coming out. The eye socket is in here. And we can feel the hollow behind it, just like an arm. Okay, it comes through. Now, and forward. The bone stops the bottom here. Then we take and come forward. We have lips. Through, feel it going over the surface. Down, chin going underneath. 
going back, you have the cheek. Come down. Feel a pull through. Now, all of this, the zygomatic arch is coming out. Through. I'm taking a th consciously thinking now the corner here. This is coming to taking coming forward down, and all of this is going down. Okay, now as you pull the ear, is coming. It's folding, coming over, pulling out same spot, coming through, around. So take an approach. This aspect, this part of the drawing as a discovery process you're taking and trying to discover. And so as I'm doing the drawing, I'm constantly going over, going over the surface as I'm doing the drawing. And again, you can feel you have to give a transition from the head into the neck. You have an esophagus. Uh, we feel the pull. Now, here, and what, this comes through very clear now. Okay? You can see the cylinder of the neck, the way the shadows and stuff are coming down. That's very obvious now. Okay? And we can feel the vertebrae sticking up in here. Now, a lot of times, these, some of the goats that are more fun to draw are pygmy goats because they have such exaggerated uh, uh, shapes. Okay. Now from here, you can feel the trapezius muscles going back. You can feel the scapula is fitting in in here. So all of this is a plane, now that's going down. And here, what, what you're seeing as the coming to the scapula, you're seeing the fullness of the muscles now. And we're feeling the pull across as the plane that's coming through in here. And then we start to pull down. And here, what we see is coming across, these are your pectoralis muscles now that are taking and pulling over to the leg. And we feel the pull coming through down to the point. So we're constantly, see, we're relating these things to the anatomical points that we know on ourselves. So this is a corner here. So this is the way that we come through. We have the sternum coming down and the elbow would be sticking out. Feel the pull. The forms are taking and going back. And so we can feel the fullness of the form coming through. Now, if you look at this, you can see now we go over the surface of the form coming down. It's going back in and back down, pulling through. You can feel the pull here. And as I was drawing this, you can see the corner of the pelvis sticking out. I'm going to take a look, look at another uh, view here. Okay, here, here is where we get a little bit clearer sense of, now, this is a good, a good example now. See, what I'm doing is I'm looking at a different view of the same animal. But what I'm seeing more clearly now is the way the sternum is sticking out so that we can feel the fullness of the form coming down, which I wasn't seeing very clearly before. So now we can think of the shoulder is still way over here. And so the reference, the, the critter is just a reference that we take and use. And we can feel the building on this. Now we can see the pull, pectoralis muscles pull across here now. But we can see it's pulling down through belly, a different angle of the leg, but we can still take and get a sense 
Oh, this is coming through. It goes uh, automatically here. I'm taking in this point right here, for instance, will be the elements that I, whenever I look at anybody's animal drawing, a four-legged animal in particular, this is what I look for, is that the way the Achilles tendon and the fact that we have this gap, because the bone is sticking out, and we can feel here's where the joint is. If they don't do that, then basically you know that they really don't know what they're talking about. Okay, so that you have to you have to feel you have to see see that that is what's coming through. Okay, now we can start to pick up here. We can see the corner of the pelvis a little bit more clearly, even though it's from a different angle. We can take and sense what it is and the way these muscles were taking and pulling away from the pelvis and coming down. And we can feel it coming across where the elbow would be. These forms are pulling in through joints. And okay. so this is giving us a, a, a starting point now of what we're taking and working with. So here as we come across now, we can see also that the belly is continuing on. Oh, that's pectoralis rib cage coming through. Waist in between. Elbow or knee, I should say. And all of this is the muscles now that are taking and coming down. And we can feel the transition over, going through. So that that gives us a, gives us a start on the whole process. Now let's take and look at uh, some more elements here. Here we have the. the Tiger, American tiger. Now again, this is cat. Now, again, what I'm bringing this one up for is I was talking about this point here as we come through. As you look, you look at this, look at the shape, look at the shape of things. And coming down, see what you're seeing there now is the knee. The knee comes down. You've got the patilla in here. And then come through. Now, they have the same, this shape here really sort of corresponds to the uh, tibial ridge. Then we get the leg going back in. And then you get the fibula, the small bone that we have coming down through here. Well, it's really small now. Okay. But what I wanted to point out was this. Look at that heel, that calcaneus bone sticking out that way. So you're really, you're really seeing this thing pulling out. And then we go into the toes, your carpal metacarpal, phalanges, okay. But this shape here, this is where I was saying that this is where your Achilles tendon takes and comes down. The soleus muscle underneath that, and your gastrocnemius would be going up into here. That's a big mechanical advantage, okay. And this is the area but I said that that hollow area behind uh, your leg, and you have it in your leg too, but it's nowhere near as extinct or ex obvious. That, in other words, I'm taking and making a point out of that. So that is what I look for constantly to take and try to help the understanding what we're doing.
Empower your creativity with the Internet's leading subscription library for artists at nma.art. No matter what your skill level, you can learn drawing, painting, sculpture, and much more with thousands of videos taught by master instructors. Our instructors are professional artists and best-selling authors, leading art education with over 40 books in print around the world. Our cutting-edge interactive learning format takes art instruction to a new level. Learn at your own pace, anytime, anywhere. Take advantage of our self-study assignments and beautiful references to practice your artistic skills. Our mission is to provide exceptional training to artists around the world at an affordable price. Thousands of artists just like you have used our library to take the first step into the art world, open new career possibilities and improve their professional skills. NMA.art is the most comprehensive art training on the internet. Your subscription is everything you need to reach your artistic goals. Let us transform your art and unleash your creative potential. Start your free trial today at nma.art. So, now, oh. and this cat then, look at the, again, it's the really tiny, tiny rib cage. And we can see the head now. So as I'm drawing this, I think of the head coming forward. I visualize, I started out with the simple sphere. Then I go across, looking for where the eyes are, coming through the eye socket, just like in the human now. Cheekbones, you know, notice how broad the cheekbones are. The nose is coming forward, exactly the same spot. And then, these fantastic teeth coming through. Okay, so basically look for the same thing. You feel the way the neck is taking and coming through. And it was very tiny, very, very tiny opening for the rib cage. It's really very, very narrow, small. And then the rib cage takes and expands from that, and it becomes really full. Okay. You can feel the vertebrae, you can feel it's going back. See how the pelvis is sticking up. Scapula now is pulled way up here, and it's coming forward in here. We can see it on the other side, over here. So in reality, then we would be seeing this cylinder of the neck fitting into this box of the scapula and coming forward. So these are the basic elements now. So the leg coming down, you can feel the elbow sticking out, everything coming down, same thing, legs coming forward, the wrist and down into the paws. You build, you're constantly building, you're working from these basic elements as they drop. Okay, now we're gonna let's take really change pace. Okay, where do you go from here? Okay, how do we how do we how do we deal with this guy? We do it the same way. Now, you have to be looking. You have to look into it and try to understand it. So I, where I start. That is again simple spherical form. Okay, now going through, looking where the eyes are. Side, and we come through, and we try to visualize the skull underneath. There's the end of the nose. Here's the skull coming down, and it's a rodent. And we can start thinking about how this is coming down. We can feel the cheekbones, round, pulled cheekbones. We can feel this pull through here. 
We can think of the center. We think of the eyes on the other side. Okay, the ear is exactly in the same place as everybody else's right here coming through. Now, as we go through the different animals, we're going to find there are different uh, configurations of ears that we can use. One of the most common is that if you think of a cylinder to start with, and then think of that cylinder as like an iris flower, that it opens up and starts doing this. Okay. And then it sort of is hollow inside. Now that's going to be rhinos and hippos, and in a sense, also the horse. You find the same kind of configuration in taping and dealing with. Now, so if we take that idea right now and we think about where we're coming out of here, see, I'm starting out with this cylinder and then I'm following, I'm following the pattern of just literally what I was doing here, except that now this is a round thing coming back into here. And then we, this is pulling down in. So again, this is now a similar, similar bit of a pattern that we see over here. We're seeing the a profile, so it's more of this. Now, as we go back into this, you have to think now, okay, this is gonna have the neck, it's gonna have the rib cage that's in here. and it's gonna to have to have a pelvis, okay? Now, so the shoulder, as we, as we look at all of this stuff coming out here, we can see that there's the shoulder is right here. Scapula is going back in at that point, and the leg is going back in, and then it's taking and coming forward, and we're coming through in here. So you're taking and visualizing, this is the corner. So now what I would do be thinking of this, as I draw that, I would be focusing, this is a corner. We can see all this fur going back in, but this is a plane going back in. The stuff, the fur is coming around, but the leg is coming, the elbow is back in there. The leg is coming forward. It has the same configuration of bones that everybody else does. Through. Now, what else we're taking, we got the elbow taking, coming back, you can feel this pushing out slightly, with this fur coming around. Now we're thinking that will be the belly. Now, as you look at this, think of, imagine the spine going up. And if you take and using a little bit of creative seeing here, you will see I drew that a little too far up. I need to take and make this coming through. But right at this point, there's a slight change in that surface. And then from there, we're getting this thing coming out, coming around coming through, and we got the other leg, back leg coming out of here. So we're constantly working over these surfaces. We feel this sort of mass of hair that's coming through. But as I'm doing this, I'm always looking for the same thing. Can I find, I'm trying to find it. Where is it at? Where is it at? And I see I didn't make this ear quite big enough. They come through, I can take and start thinking, but okay, now the fur is coming down. We can feel the nose coming out. And he's got this uh, itty bitty nose out here coming through. And he come down, he's got the hole here coming around. We can feel the fullness of the fur as we're coming around. Got the eyes in. Got cheeks, zygomatic arch, 
things taking and coming around. We take and we can feel the fullness of these forms. Now, you can see where this pulls up. We feel it coming around, coming in full, through. We feel the eye socket coming out on the other side a little bit, fullness, fur. So even as you start out, what you're seeing is this huge blob. And we're taking the lower part, got really big teeth, the rodent, you feel this thing coming down. And now we start to feel all of this, the rows and rows of fur coming through. But it's all still building. It's all building on top of the basic structures, like humans. Somebody that weighs uh, 400 pounds, their pelvis hasn't changed. They're no bigger than anybody else's. It's just that all of the stuff that they've added onto it that takes and makes the change look different. I always joke about the in California that our governor Arnold was a great weightlifter and bodybuilder, but his rib cage wasn't any bigger than mine. Uh, I wish some of the other stuff was, but uh, it was big mine. <laughs> okay, now I can see where I got this pulled off a little too too far, taking come around, and but you're taking and working around. You look into the animal. You try to discover what it is that's going on inside there. Okay, now let's take and. Uh, Go on and look at some mice. Okay, now, the first thing I want you to work with, we've gone through all the skeletons, we've gone through all the stuff. Start with mice and hamsters. I would get one, take it. Uh, a lot of people, actually in studios, often when you're dealing with small critters, people would buy mice or hamsters and they would have them sitting on top of their desk. Okay, the reason I'm saying starting with this is because what you want to be able to get, and I keep repeating, it's the action. And as you can see, they're not going to sit still for you. Okay. And so what we deal with them is very, very, very simple forms. Now, see, I'm starting out with this, this, three, stretching up, coming through, feel the pull, the legs going back down. You're taking and scoping me out here, here coming through. So now, it's a very, very simple round form. So now, you go back and you start looking at them. And we start to see it's this, it's taking in through, through, ears. As you can see, the mouse doesn't really look an awful lot like Mickey. Oh, this guy's getting ready to get out of there, huh? Okay, so now I feel like you've drawn that head a little bit large, but when you take and you feel, you feel the volume of the form. You're feeling the volume. And as I do this, I'm very, very conscious of scapula, the pattern that we're going through, the hands, got the rib cage. I'm taking conscious of the pelvis, and so I come down the knee, come down here, and this is the beginning. So now, as we draw them, as you take, and you should fill up pages of drawing with the mice. So you're taking, you're coming through, coming around, small, now there are certain characteristics. Uh, mice, uh, even the meerkat, is that you will see uh, squirrels be taking the rib cage. The tummies will take on a different character. They'll be maybe even fuller like this, coming through. You're still looking for the pelvis, coming in, full, tail, smallish arms, head, coming through. Ears. So 
you need to take and do a lot of drawing from them to familiarize yourself with how they go. So we're taking in. Now let me let me take and break break the heads down a little bit. What you're doing with this was a little bit act more act. That's too big. Okay, start with the idea of a simple sphere. Okay, now have the eyes, and then this is taking and coming forward and coming through. So right away, and they have cheeks are coming through. So right away now you can see that takes on you know, sort of the generic rodent look. Ears coming through. That's the beginning right there. It's very, very, very simple. Then you take it and you start to, as you build the thing, look, look at the hamster over there. Now he's a little different. And that when I do, he's climbing, looking at where the nose, eyes, ears, taking, so he's taking that really full, full in here. And we feel the fullness coming through, bigger bottom, coming through, feel the tail. So everything you just take it and constantly, you're constantly drawing and you build, fill pages up of these drawings. I remember uh, once when I was when I was actually uh, director of the character animation department at Cal Arts. Uh, one of the things we did is we would take and every year have five hundred people apply. Okay. And I remember this one uh, particular semester, uh, somebody had not had much experience drawing figures. But had some really nice drawings just showing the action of a mouse. And they had so much movement and flow to them. And we accepted that person rather than somebody who was much, much more proficient with the figure and they could render and everything else. But they didn't have any life to them. And so what you're looking for is to be able to take and draw, draw the characters and bring them to life. And you see, as you're doing it then, what goes on, and if you can possibly take and interact, get the animals to interact with each other, as you're doing the drawing, you make it up, storytelling. See, I'm just dealing with very, very simple, simple volumes that I'm building on. It's essentially talking about a rib cage fitting into a larger area that's got some corners on it. The scapula is building on top, the head out here. And we take and you work with the basic configuration. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And you should try to take and do, do a hundred. <laughs> Fill up pages uh, you can draw with a pen, pencil. It makes absolutely no difference. But this is what we want to do. And one of the things I've done in the past with the drawing of them is to take in, uh, in, a, in a, actually an animal drawing class, I took and rented 30 mice and I gave everybody a mouse. Okay, and we actually had them uh, modeled on, on stands where drawing benches turned on end and it was put, put them on the ridge of the drawing bench. They didn't go anywhere. Okay, they didn't like to fall a lot. Okay, then we take and we had sticks going across from one to the other that they would scamper across. Another thing that you can do is take two clear plastic uh, cups uh, and you put a mouse in it and then put them together 
and tape the edge so that you can look at it from any kind of angle and punch some holes so they get air. But that's another way of taking and doing it. So you're building, the, you, but you draw from them. And what they will do is they will force you into not copying because they are not going to sit still for you. And that's exactly what I want. I want you to feel the flow and the movement of the animals, to see the basic kinds of shapes that they take and start making, and how they take and then build. Look at, look at artists like Beatrice Potter. Great. Her whole career was built around taking and seeing and drawing these small little critters. So you say, now I can come back in and I start to add a little bit more. And then coming through, we're building on the thing. So this is the, the critical part for everything that we're going to take and be doing is to start with these small little animals, build, feel the shape. See how they relax, it relates to each other. Look at the fullness of the belly. Try to see the slight differences from one to the next. And we go from there. But it's all building one simple volume on top of another simple volume. Anyway, so next week, but take and do lots of drawings of mice. And then we're going to keep expanding the animals as we take and build up a thing. This has been a good start, and let's get on with it. I originally started teaching animal drawing, oh, 50 years ago. How do you draw something that you don't know anything about? I'm Glenn Vilpu. I approach animal drawing differently. I teach animal drawing from a structural point of view so that you can start to draw animals from imagination.